I was about to lose my mind. Face different challenges, face days and months, fell in love, only to get beaten. Like, just, he, he was just a few minutes away from me. So welcome back to another video. Before I watch this video actually, I'm going to need you to do something for me. First of all, please don't skip any parts of this video because this video is very, very important. I don't know how long it's going to be, but please, please don't skip any parts of this video as it's going to be very important. So basically, I just finished my first book ever in my life. The Alchemist and I got very important lessons I learned from this book but most importantly I'm going to be talking about like the title of this video, The Desert Season of Your Life. Of course you all know what the desert is, desert signifies dryness, drought, no water, just dryness basically. Before I even get into the point I'm going to give you guys a story, a story time like summarize this book to you guys. Um, the main character of this book Santiago from Spain is a shepherd boy from Andalusia and he has always had this dream whenever he sleeps under a sycamore tree. This recurring dream he has been having all when he sleeps under the sycamore tree in the church. In the dream, a child is telling him that he should go and seek for a treasure that he's going to find at the feet of the pyramid at, in Egypt. So this boy is from Spain and he has to go to Egypt to go and find his treasure at the feet of the pyramid. I'm going to skip a lot of things from this story because I'm going to put focus on the part, desert parts because that's the title of this video. So if you want to get all the bits and pieces of this of the book, you have to go and read the book for yourself because I 100% I recommend it. So the boy embarks on his journey to go and find his treasure in Egypt. On his way to Egypt, he meets an old man, his name is Melchizedek. And this old man tells him, like he tells the old man about his, like he needs help to find his treasure and that, um, like he needs directions basically. So this old man convinces him to sell one tenth of his sheep in return for an advice on how to go and find his treasure. So after he does that, the old man gives him the advice that he should follow omens, that omens, omens like good omens or signs basically, not omens, signs or omens are, are signs are left by God, omens are left by God to help you to find your treasure. So before the old man goes, he gives him two stones, Omi Mantorim, and tells him that whenever he's trying to make a decision and he doesn't know, his God feeling can't tell him like the right judgment to make, then he should bring out the stones and one signifies yes, the other signifies no. So he should ask himself some questions and then answer and and pick a, pick a stone. Whatever stone he picks, if he picks yes, then that means he should do this. If he picks no, then he shouldn't. Anywho, fast forward, fast forward, because he, he leaves this guy on his way to actually to the desert. He meets this guy, and then this guy, you know, tells him that in order to get to, through the desert, you have to buy camels, you have to buy some stuff. So he begins to spend, he spends some of the money he has. What does this signify, basically? Like, uh, on your journey, during your desert period, during this desert season of your life, you're going to spend, you're going to have to invest, you're going to have to sacrifice, basically, to help you get to one point to another point in your journey, in your desert season. So in the process of trying to, like, going to go and get camels now, so so Santiago was distracted, and then, because there was a someone selling, someone selling swords or something like that, so he saw, he saw the swords, and he got distracted, and then he goes to go and, like, look at the sword. And, you know, after he was looking at the sword, the guy that he came with that was because this guy that he came with he gave all the money to the guy he gave the guy his money to like hold it for him because he was like new there and then by the time he was done looking at the admired the soul that he saw at the shop and turned and turned the guy that he met that was like a tour guide had disappeared with his money my guy lost all his money and he's left with only two things the stones or one thing actually the stones the omi and torim which was given to him by the king of salem so now he's now left with the choice whether he should go back to his country or go back to Spain or continue moving forward to go and find his treasure in, in, in Egypt. And he decides to continue with the journey. As he continues to go through his journey, he meets a merchant, a crystal seller basically, and offers him like he's going to clean his glassware in exchange for something to eat because my guy is hungry at this point and all his things have been, have been stolen. Anywho, fast forward. So as he was cleaning, as the boy starts cleaning some crystals, right, the people Two people come and they buy crystals from the boy. And then the crystal seller, the merchant now realizes that, oh my god, this, girl, this boy could be good Look, it could be a good omen and he decides to offer the boy a job at the crystal shop to start cleaning his crystals to sell and so more customers can come and buy more crystals he asks the crystal seller the merchant that he wants to like only work for one day for one night so he's going to have a lot of money to go to egypt but one day done to almost one year and you know the boy has been cleaning crystals for this merchant and almost forgot about forgot about his treasure the treasure which he was looking for what does what does this signify to you that during your desert period right Sometimes some things are gonna come through your way, come your way to this like to that distracts you. Not really, not really distract, but he faced some he faced a challenge. The challenge was that he, he got his thing stolen from him, so he wasn't able to continue with his with his journey because he needed money. So he had he had to go and look for where he'll be of value. Good omen, be of value, become of value. In order to get money so he'll be able to travel and continue with his journey to go and get his stuff so while the boy was working as the guy cleaning crystals at the merchant shop he, he discovers different opportunities what do i mean by this the crystals the crystal seller had difficulties selling his crystals right but this boy discovered one opportunity first of all the crystals were not displayed 
so he builds a display for the crystal so they look more presentable I like, so people will see them and see the display and buy more crystals then he noticed that some travelers travel up the hill and then they don't have tea to drink or so, like they're always thirsty and then he's, he, he, that clicks to him and he discovers a new opportunity he now goes to the merchant and tells the merchant that maybe we could sell tea to the people that travel up the hill and the merchant was like the merchant with his self-limiting beliefs now tells the boy but there are a lot of people selling tea around here so the boy decides to bring an innovation so I mean other people could be selling their teas in just maybe random cups then he decides that since the guy is a crystal merchant they should sell their tea in crystal cups glass cups anywho during this period the boy you know the boy identified an opportunity on how they could scale their business and start selling tea in crystal glasses and not only selling tea in the process why people come and buy crystal crystal crystals glasses they also buy tea this news this gist goes around the whole city goes around the whole village if you will and then people from far and wide start coming to come and want to see who is this man selling this thing crystal glasses and then the business becomes so big that the man has to employ two other people because the business has scaled all thanks to the shepherd boy after the business has scaled and everything like this, so santiago decides he wants to go home because he now has a lot of money to buy sheep and return to his to spain because he has a lot of money now so as he was packing his things to go back to his country to go back to spain then he remembered that he has his pouch and in that pouch was a jacket there so he went to, he wanted to go and get the jacket so maybe I, as he was going home he would give to someone that might need it so as he took the pouch up and put his hand inside the pouch to get his stones then the two stones fall out Umim and Turim before this before this back forward he, the boy has forgotten about his vision he forgot about he had already given up on his dream on going to Egypt to go and find his treasure but then as he found as he found as the two stones fall out, everything rekindled, really and then he's like, he remembered that, oh my god, this is this was the main reason why I started this journey at first, to go and get my treasure, and this urges him to, instead of going back to his country, Spain, he decides to continue the journey and go back to the main reason why he started his journey at first, going to Egypt to go and get his treasure. He embarks back on his journey, he meets an Englishman, then they begin to, you know, talk about, like, the, their different visions, the Englishman tells him that he's looking for an alchemist, someone that can, that has elixir of life, and, you know, just chit-chatting and stuff like that, so, Along the journey, right, he encounters a beautiful woman, Fatima, and then he falls in love. What does this mean? In the process of you chasing your goals, you can, you can, you're not only you can, you're going to fall in love. He just shows her like, he just, I don't know, I don't know what they're trying to do with this part of the story, but like, maybe they're just trying to tell us that like, as in the process of us chasing our goals and, you know, chasing our dreams, you're going to fall in love. And I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely normal. But there was a very important lesson I learned from this part, this particular section. He saw Fatima, he was, he was love at first sight, and he begins to tell her how much he loves her and stuff like that. Basically, he was about to give up his dream of going to find his treasure to stay with Fatima. Fatima doesn't want him to, to give up his dream just because of love and, you know, stay with him. Stay with her, sorry. So he promises her that he's going to come back for her, and then he continues to embark on his journey. So as he embarks on the journey, he meets the alchemist. So who's the alchemist? An alchemist in this book is like someone that knows all, that knows like a lot of things. Uh, like I don't know, I think someone like master of science. But basically, in the book, the alchemist was someone who like could transform raw gold ore to gold in the purified states. He tells the alchemist, uh, alchemist about what he wants to do and the alchemist like he tells him he can help him and stuff like that. So two of them begin to embark on a journey. So as they embark on this journey, right, my guy, Santiago, is thinking about his, his love for Sima. Every day he's has thinking about her. He tells the alchemist about it and the alchemist tells him that you must understand that love never keeps a man from pursuing his destiny. If he abandons his pursuit, it's because it wasn't true love. I mean, this 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 was this this hit the nail on the head for me. It's facts. Of course, you should love, you should fall in love, but like, let's not distract you from your actual goal. The goal. So all this, all this actually are happening in the desert. As they were forging forward to you know go to where they had to go, they faced another challenge, another challenge along in the in, in the desert, which was them being captured. And then the alchemy, they were supposed to be like. Then the alchemist tells him that like Santiago is like someone that can control the wind, that can destroy things basically. What I understood from this part was like this was like another basic test. And in in our day to day life, this could signify like the tests. Different tests like let me say qualification tests like exams basically or just things along the way like let me say I want to become a doctor for example the exams I have to take take like this is like a test I have to prove that I know what I am doing or I, I am what I am prove that I actually studied for six years so these are the tests so Santiago was tested he controlled the wind and proved to everybody that he was the out like he was the controller of the wind or something like that that's besides the point he actually passed this test and they were released so after all this the alchemist and Santiago had to part ways when the alchemist and Santiago were captured they had to sacrifice and um, the alchemist the Santiago's coins because you know remember he got some coins from the merchant seller so he had to sacrifice his coins in order to save him and the alchemist's life and also the alchemist himself had some had a yellow yellow ball yellow egg in his bag that yellow egg none of them that, that yellow egg was like is like gold ore or so raw gold ore 
he had it in his bag, but no, no, nobody could like process it. So like they didn't understand what the value of that was for. So they had to earlier sacrifice the shepherd's coins. So after everything, after the pet test has been passed and everything, they get to a nearby village and then the alchemist asks for pan and then he begins to transform this gold or into pure gold. At this point, they are, they are at a monastery, right? The alchemist then then divides it into like four parts. So he gives the monk at the monastery and tells him like, oh, this is for your generosity to, towards the pilgrims. And then the monk at the monastery now says like, oh my god, this is too much for the work have like for my generosity. The alchemist now, now replies, my sister, don't say that next time that the life might be listening to you and give you less next time. And then the alchemist now turns to the boy and now gives the shepherd boy his own share of it. The boy was also about to say that it was too much for him too, but he already heard what the alchemist said to the monk and didn't say it anymore. After the boy takes his own share of the plates of the gold, then they, they now part ways because the alchemist said he had to go back to go back to the desert where they came from a tribe, so he had to go back to where the tribe was and everything and stuff like that. So he got to his sand dune and he climbed to the sun, to the top of the sand dune, and then he climbed to the top, top of the sand dune. He began to feel excitement because at the top of the sand dune he could now see the pyramid, he, all what he has been chasing. For, for almost two years, okay, I don't know if it's two years, but one year plus, he has what he has been chasing. He's, he's finally going to get to the pyramids, and the pyramids is just two hours away. He could actually see it from where he was standing. And then he knelt down and began to thank God for helping him to, you know, to believe his destiny, for meeting the for meeting Melchizedek, for meeting the merchant man, for meeting the alchemist, and for meeting the Englishman, because all these were important things that happened to him that taught him different lessons that got him to the final destination, the, the pyramid of Egypt. So remember earlier where he, the this supposed treasure is the treasure is at the feet of the pyramid of Egypt. So he begins to dig the sand dunes, you know, to find this treasure. He digs, 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 digs. Then there's no treasure. Then he's disappointed because there's one winds that are coming to blow back what he has digged out back into the what, what he has excavated. After some hours have passed, then he begins to hear footsteps of people, and then some refugees now come, now come to him and ask him like, what is he doing there? They now tell him that they are refugees from the war that happened in the desert, so and they need money. So they now say, what is he hiding there? Because I think they see him with the bag. So what, what are you hiding there? So the boy at this point was terrified, and he was like, I'm not hiding anything. But one of them now like drag the boy. After they, after they drag him, then now I like, throw him away or like toss him, and then the, the gold from his bag falls to the ground. And the guy was like, oh look, he has gold. So maybe they thought that he was trying to hide his gold in the, in the sand. They now made him to continue digging to, to, to get the gold. That they thought he was hiding in the sand so they made him digging and like they didn't find anything they didn't find any gold in the sand because i mean he didn't have any gold in the sand obviously he was looking for his treasure that <laughs> he thought was at the feet of the pyramid of egypt so after they discovered there was no gold in the ground they beat up my they beat up this guy they beat him to pop they beat him like his mouth is already bleeding his clothes are already torn he's bruised and stuff like that he now screams that he's looking for his treasure that he now told the, the people that attacked him that like he dreamt of his treasure and his treasure is at egypt so that he had dreamt twice of his treasure being hidden near the pyramids of egypt so like the man that was not like the leader of the whole refugee stuff not to them to leave him alone like they should like you know stop hit stop hitting him maybe he must have stolen the gold he's like they were about to take their leave and like leave him there beaten to pop as they were about to leave then the leader of the group now comes back now tells the boy that you're not going to die that you're going to live and see how stupid it is for you to like chase chase your dreams basically like implying that it was stupid for you to like chase the dream that you you have that two years ago that this that he himself that he had a dream at, at that exact spot the leader now is telling the boy that they are beaten to pop that so two years ago right here on this spot I had a recurring dream too. I dreamed that I should travel to the fields of Spain and look for a ruined church where shepherds and their sheep slept. In my dream, there was a sycamore growing out of the ruins of the sacred city, and I was told that if I dug the roots of the sycamore, I would find the hidden treasure. But I am not stupid as to cross an entire desert just because of a recurring dream. My head was about to explode. <laughs> I was like, what kind of plot twist? Like, why don't you have a movie on this book? Because look at, do you understand what just happened now? This boy came all the way from this sycamore tree, the church, he traveled all the way through Egypt, through, you know, through the deserts, through different places, got robbed, faced different challenges, faced days and months, fell in love, and then he traveled only to get beaten. Like, just, he, he was just a few minutes away from the pyramid, and he got beaten. Basically, what this part just implied to me was that, like, that dream that you think only you got, someone else got it somewhere. Because the man said two years ago he had his dream that he should go, should go to Spain and go and look for it. While him, he had his own dream. Remember, this boy has been chasing this, this, this stuff for up to one year too. Like, so. This man and this boy had this dream at around the same time, but it was who had this, this, this sense of urgency to chase this dream that, got, that, that was going to get his first. I mean, the boy already got into where he was, and then this man had already confirmed it, confirmed it to the boy and told him that like the, the treasure is at the church where he was coming from. Bro, I was about to lose my mind when I, when I read this stuff. Let <laughs> me just give you guys the last, the last part of this, last part of this book. But I'm not stupid to cross an entire desert just because of a recurring dream. I am not supposed to cross an entire desert. I'm not supposed to, to, you know, to make to make myself uncomfortable, you know, to get to get my a treasure. I am just listen to what this guy is saying. Some of us might be this guy. Some of us might be this guy. Don't be like this guy. 
if you have an idea today, act, act on that idea. Don't, don't, don't be like, I'm not stupid enough to do this. I'm not stupid enough to invest this. I'm not stupid enough to go, to go this. I'm not, see, that dream that you had, someone else has it. it like, look at everybody. No, don't play. That exactly, like exactly the same dream he had. But this man, he had to travel through the desert to go to Spain. The boy, he had to travel through this desert to go to Egypt. After he heard this and he disappeared, the boy just goes up immediately and he looks at the pyramid and they were like they were laughing at him and him he laughed back at them because now he now knew where his treasure was he knew where his treasure was i say i read this book after i read this book i i almost lost my mind anyhow sure i have some points now like from the desert period because the boy had to go through the desert period of his desert season of his life you know to to achieve to, to, to get to where he was beaten to finally get to where he realized where his treasure was so what does the desert season what does it signify the desert season is a season of preparation the boy was prepared. He was prepared. Look at he had to go through all this journey because during this journey he actually met different people that taught him different life skills. He learned how to speak Arabic. I haven't forgot to mention this. He was he, he's originally a Spanish speaker, but he learned how to speak Arabic. He learned how to he learned different skills in this phase of his life, the desert period of his desert season of his life. So the desert season is a season of preparation. The desert season is a season of growth. How you use your desert season will determine the level of your public manifestation. I mean, these points are for me, someone that we had in 2021, actually. I, I don't know how everything is just coming to, you know, connect with each other right now, but like, it's just crazy, it's just busting my head right now. And I just feel like I have to, you know, release this video because I don't know who might need it, but yeah, you might be in your desert season right now. I want to let you know that. The desert season doesn't mean like, you're going to remain dry forever. Your desert season is preparing you for what is going to come. It's preparing you for when you're, when you, when, when you're about to get your treasures. Like, is, is giving you the, the, the required skills, the required things you need to, to have. Because let me tell you, if you just get your treasure like that, I don't know. If the boy from the from the beginning just you know just dug his camel tree while he was still in Spain and you know just got his treasure, I mean he wouldn't have met Fatima. He wouldn't have learned everything he learned at learned throughout his journey. He wouldn't have gotten his things stolen from. Like learn just he learned a lot of different life skills and very different life lessons. Yeah, I don't know if I did justice to this whole thing, but you need. To, I definitely recommend this book. Ten over ten. You need to read this book for yourself to understand what I'm talking about to get the full gist because I actually summarized the shit out of this book. Anywho, I just feel like this is for somebody that might be in the desert city when everything seems to be dry, where you're facing different difficulties. I just want to let you know that it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to see, it's not, there's light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not going to be, it's not going to be for forever. And you know, you're going to find that treasure which you're looking for, that thing you're working hard for, you're going to get it. It's, it's only, it's only, it's only a matter of time. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. This is the first time you see me on your screen. My name is DTP, my name is Iwan, and I'm a YouTuber vlogger and I like to talk I like to talk on the, I like to talk to the camera but anyhow I'm going to see you guys in the next video today and it's your boy DTP signing out do you have to hit the subscribe button smash the like button turn on your post notifications and um, what else yeah share this video share this video with somebody you think might need it and I'm going to see you guys in the next video today it's your boy signing out stay safe and peace